Now, what we're going to look at here is what we call completed square form. Now, in Algebra 2, you'll be familiar with something like this. Sometimes it's written x minus h squared plus k as well. And if we have that, then the vertex is a, b. The key thing to notice about this is it's the opposite of what's inside the parentheses. Because we've got negative a here, then it becomes positive a. But the value on the end here, positive b, stays as positive b. Now, I'm going to use a slightly different method from what most teachers will show you is because most teachers have equal to zero here, and then they use a method of moving something to the other side of the equal sign. But if we don't actually have an equal sign and we just have an expression like this, then actually we can't do that. So what we actually need to do is we need to take half the coefficient of x, and then we're going to plug that into this formula here. So half of positive 6 is positive 3. And notice it looks like this form now. So this is the first part, and this is our square part. Now, what we're going to do now is what we'll never actually do again, but just so you can see what's happening here. Squared means you multiply by itself. So automatically you get x times x, which is x squared, which is the term we're looking for here. We also get x times 3 and 3 times x. So 3x plus 3x is 6x. And that's why we take half the coefficient of this. So when we add it together twice, it will automatically guarantee to give us this term. Now there is a problem with doing this though. We also get an additional term that we didn't want, which is 3 times 3. Now 3 times 3 is 9, but that's not actually what I want for this question. I actually want 12. So this is what we're going to do when we look at the question. We're going to do half the coefficient of this, and we're going to fill it in here. When we do FOIL on this, we know we're going to get the first two terms, but the last term is going to dis disagree. So 3 squared is 9, but I actually want 12. So what I need to do is I need to add on 3. Now if it asks for the vertex, we do the opposite of the first one, and then the second one stays the same. And that's my method for using complete in the square. Probably a little different to what you've seen before in Algebra 2, but it'll get around the problem of um, if there's no equal sign, how do you do this? So same idea with this one. This time we're going to do the shortcut. So I'm going to do half of negative 4 is negative 2, and I'm going to square it. The reason I do half the coefficient is so I get the first two terms automatically guaranteed when I multiply this out. I also have an additional term, negative 2 squared. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. I don't want 4, though. I only want 1. So if I subtract 3 from my answer, then that indeed would work. Vertex, opposite of the one inside the parentheses and then the same one that you see outside the parentheses. Our last one, same idea, half the coefficient here. And I'm not going to do FOIL because I know automatically I'm going to get x squared minus 8x, but I'm also going to get negative 4 squared, which is 16. I don't want 16, I want negative 3, so I need to subtract 19. So my vertex would be 4, negative 19. Obviously this works very nicely when we have integer values, oh, sorry, even integer values, but not quite so nice when we have odd numbers because they don't halve quite so nicely. Um, but that's your basic setup for, system for um, completing the square. Now you can also use completing the square for solving quadratics. Um, ideally factoring is the best method, and actually this one does factor, so we can actually use that to check our answer in a second. So 2 and 4 um, equals 0 and therefore x will equal negative 2 and negative 4. We could also complete, we could also use the quadratic formula as well, and that would give us the same answer. Um, but we're going to do complete in square form. So I'm going to do half the coefficient of this value here. So half of 6 is 3. I automatically know that I'm going to get the first two terms, but I'm also going to get 3 squared, which is 9. So if I take away 1, then I'll get the 8 that I'm actually looking for. So if it asks me for the vertex for this question, negative 3, negative 1. This time though I'm solving, so I'm going to start moving terms to the other side here. So instead of subtracting 1, I'm going to add 1. Instead of squaring, I'm going to do a square root. And the square root of 1 is positive 1 on negative 1, just like we see on the quadratic formula. And instead of positive 3 here, I'm going to get negative 3. And then if I check both answers, negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2, and negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4, then you can see that we indeed do have the correct answer there by checking from factoring. So just another way you can solve equations using completed square form. Now we're looking at a completed square form again, but this time the leading coefficient of x squared is not 1. So what we need to do is we need to take a common factor. 
Now, actually, I only take common factors of the first two terms, and I'm going to leave this one alone, mainly because 5 certainly doesn't divide by 3, so I'm going to try and keep my integer values for as long as I can. So my first step is just to take out a common factor. Basically, so I get left with x squared, which is what I'm used to, and now I can do complete a square form on this. So I do a half of this value. Now, I've got to be extra careful this time when I multiply out. So I know I'm going to get my x squared plus 4x. That works fine. I also get this extra term, which is 2 squared, which is 4. Very tempting to want to put plus 1 here to make 5, but there's something slightly different here. It's not actually 2 squared. It's 3 times 2 squared. So 3 times 2 squared is 12. Take away 7 gives us 5. That would be our completed square form. And the vertex, if it was to ask, would be the opposite of this one. And then this one stays the same. Now the 3, actually, all that does is that changes the steepness of the graph. So instead of being a nice U shape, it's probably going to be a steeper U shape. So that part doesn't actually change where the vertex is. Now I put another one here as well. Let's make that squared. So I'm going to take 4 as a common factor at the start. And I'm not going to take a factor of 4 on the last term, mainly because it doesn't work very well. Now once it says x squared, now I can complete the square. The first step I just factored. So half of negative 2 is negative 1, and I'm going to square it. And then now I've got to check back. So negative 1 squared is 1 times by 4 is 4, and that's the key step on this one. I don't want 4, I want 31. So I need to add on another 27. And then if it asks for the vertex again, the opposite of this one is positive 1, and the second one just stays the same. Once again, the 4 at the front, that just changes the steepness of the equation. So it would be a steeper U shape. Now if I got a negative and it asked me to complete the square, then I'm just going to take the negative as a factor here. So the negative is just going to change the sign of everything. So two negatives make a positive here, and then the same thing on this last term here. And then now I can just complete the square as normal. So half of negative 8 is negative 4. We've got to be careful on this step here as well. So when we multiply back here, negative 4 squared is 16. Actually, it's not 16, though. No, it's negative 16. So I don't want negative 16. I want negative 3. So I need to add on 13. Vertex, if it asks, opposite of negative 4, then 13, I'm just going to leave alone. For this one, though, the negative at the start of the question it doesn't affect the vertex, it just changes the direction of the graph. So negative x squared means it's going to be an upside down graph. Now, if we've got a negative and a leading coefficient, then we're just going to take both of those as common factors. Only on the first two terms again, though. So negative 2x squared, negative 12x, so we know we're good so far. Now we're going to take half the coefficient of x, so half of 6 is 3. Now when we multiply out, 3 squared is 9, times my negative 2 is negative 18. I don't want negative 18, I want 11. So what I need to do is add on 29, and then that would be true. So vertex for this one, if it asks, negative 3, 29. And the negative just tells you it's going to be an upside-down parabola, and the negative 2 tells you it's going to be a slightly steeper upside-down parabola.